Uh, I'm Kaylee Howarth with Marigold Library System, and I'm really happy to introduce tonight's speaker. Uh, David McAllister is with the Western Irrigation District uh, here in Strathmore, Alberta. Uh, during the presentation, we ask that you just uh, keep your microphone on mute, but at the end of the presentation, there'll be time for questions, and please, by all means, feel free to unmute um, and ask David anything, any questions that you have come up during the presentation, okay? David? Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. This is uh, Dave McAllister calling, and uh, appreciate everybody coming out tonight, and uh, appreciate the interest in irrigation, what we do, and uh, I could just uh, switch it over to the uh, presentation now. Uh, what we're going to be reviewing is uh, the Western Irrigation District and Irrigation in Alberta. So. Uh, the Western Irrigation District, uh, our history, our past, present, and future, and then what the role of irrigation in Alberta is, and uh, what uh, some of the dynamics are around that. So, in terms of irrigation in Alberta, there are 13 irrigation districts in Alberta, which irrigate uh, 1.42 million acres of land, which represents 65% of all the land irrigated in, Al in Canada. So you can see here from the map, uh, the map of the 13 irrigation districts, uh, we are uh, located at number 12, just to the east of Calgary. Uh, we irrigate uh, 95,000 acres, and I'll uh, present more on Western there. But there are a number of other irrigation districts ranging in size from uh, the St. Mary River, which is the largest, uh, down to uh, several irrigation districts uh, that have just uh, several thousand acres. So, the uh, the significance of irrigated land to the uh, provincial economy can't be uh, overstated because twenty percent of the agricultural GDP is uh, coming from four percent of the land base, which is the irrigated land base. So you can see some of the uh, pictures in the background where. Irrigation really does green uh, what would otherwise be uh, very much less productive. Uh, together, the irrigation uh, districts did a study and found that uh, by employing an economist, we determined that for every dollar invested in irrigation, uh, $3 in additional benefits are created for the provincial economy. That's in terms of fuel purchased, it's in terms of uh, irrigation equipment and uh, employment uh, opportunities that in the irrigated area that wouldn't be uh, viable otherwise. So for Western now, we can start with our history. So our history starts with uh, Palliser's expedition in the uh, surveys that uh, started in the mid-1850s. And uh, there's Captain Palliser there. He, uh, when he serviced, uh, when he surveyed this part of the, uh, of the prairies, what he saw was a naturally dry area. Here's his quote. Uh, in the area called the Bow River, flows in a deep, narrow valley through a region of arid plains devoid of timber or pasturage of good quality. The sage and cactus abound in the whole of the scanty vegetation bespeaks an arid climate. So you can see here where the, the soil maps he prepared were, and looking at the thick wooded country, plain country, and then the arid plain, which extends, you know, through the, you know, the present day prairies into Manitoba, but uh, transitions as you get more into the mountainous areas to the west. So, with this being the background, when the Canadian Pacific was granted a three million acre land grant, what they realized is in order to effectively settle this area, they would have to bring irrigation to it. So in 1904, the CPR began construction of a gravity uh, network of canals of over a thousand kilometers. Uh, starting with a weir in Calgary, which you can see if you're in Calgary uh, in the present day, 
where our structure is just uh, down from uh, the uh, Max Bell Arena on 17th. And uh, there's the view of the structure in 1927. That's our diversion structure. And it proceeded to the east to uh, reservoir number one. And I always ask this question uh, when I present. And the answer to this question is, if you've ever been to Chestermere Lake, reservoir number one is actually what's now known as uh, Chestermere Lake. And Chestermere Lake is uh, owned by the WID. And we originally owned all the land around Chestermere Lake and gradually um, it sold it off to uh, the residents, which first Chestermere was a summer, uh, a summer village, evolved into a town and is now a city. So after the land had been sold and to farmers and uh, settled, the CPR did continue to own and operate the canal network until 1944 when it began uh, looking at its operations and deciding that it wanted to be a railway company and uh, not maintain the canal network anymore. At that time, uh, there had been discussion whether the canal network would be closed, what would be done, but a group of local farmers decided to assume ownership of the canal, and the Western Irrigation District was formed in 1944. So we're going to be celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2019, and uh, this is a picture of uh, the early board of the uh, WID at the time of its formation. So when I do this uh, presentation, I always like to review the that was then and this is now in terms of irrigation. So what we see on the left is early flood irrigation. You know, flood irrigation is still used today in many cases. It uh, is about 30% efficient uh, when modeled by Alberta agriculture. And on the right, we have a, uh, an irrigation pivot, which, you know, the, the highest uh, developed most efficient uh, low pressure pivot systems these days are around 84, 85% efficient. So that's showing how, and we'll see it even more so later on, how we're able to grow as much or more food with less water. And the story of irrigation in this province has been increases in efficiency driving increases in food production over the last you know, a over a hundred years since the system was first opened. Again, looking at installation of some of our early canals on the left with, you know, horses and men, and now contrasted with uh, the situation of the present day where you see a large uh, pipeline project where we're installing large diameter pipe and completely underground for the, the increased efficiency with, you know, reductions in seepage, reductions in evaporation, so much more water efficient. And then no pass-by water, so in a closed pipeline, water is stored until it's needed. So even more efficiency that way compared to a canal where unless you had storage along the way, it would go out the far end and, and be spilled out the end of the system without being used. So the way we uh, deliver water now is even more efficient than it was then. So as I said, the history of uh, the WID contrasting what we see at uh, the city of Chestermere there on the left, uh, more original, and then you know the build out that we've seen today and even uh, anticipated in the future around the lake. So that's the history of the WID, and in our current operations, this is the extent of our district. So on the west side, you can see the number 24. That's uh, the city of Chestermere, where that's located. Uh, we range from Chestermere in the west of our district to Clooney in the east. From the south, we uh, pretty much uh, deliver down to Carslin, and at the north, we go about as far as Irakana. 
Now, we don't just service uh, agricultural delivery, although that's our primary, uh, you know, primary kind of customers we service. We uh, deliver to 95,000 acres of farm, a number of uh, livestock delivery customers, but we also have commercial conveyance. So we convey to power plants uh, for, for cooling of, of systems. We provide all the water that's delivered to the Cross Iron Mill Mall in uh, Balzac to the north of Calgary. And on the far east side, we deliver raw water to uh, a number of municipalities, which is then processed in, and treated to deliver potable water to those same communities. So the picture on the uh, right side of the, of the presentation is uh, our raw water reservoir that uh, has been constructed where we deliver to uh, Wheatland County and then it's taken to the communities of Gleeson, Standard, and Rockyford. So the future of the WID in terms of water, in terms of water quality is, as you can see from the map, we're downstream, we're immediately downstream of you know, significant urban development now and significant future urban development, which will generate a substantial amount of stormwater, which has a significant impact to our system if not mitigated. So the stormwater is less, is of a lower quality than the irrigation water, and that would have substantial impact if we were allowed to run into our system. However, you know, we've taken a number of steps to reduce this. So one case what we're doing is we're going to be taking stormwater from a number of areas on the east side of Calgary in Rocky View County in the city of Chestermere, Town of Strathmore and Wheatland County and we'll be capturing that water, directing it into a system of parallel conveyance. So we're going to construct a canal in our existing right of way, uh, put it, put uh, that stormwater into that canal so it never mixes with the, uh, the primary irrigation water and then we maintain the quality and yet the municipalities can develop. So they are, so the municipalities are actually contributing the majority of, well, 100% of the, uh, the funding for this project and we're contributing uh, use of our right of ways, therefore preserving our water quality. Another aspect of our future is growing more food with less water. Irrigation districts as a whole have gotten 30% more efficient in the last 15 years. So with the same amount of water, we're growing 30% more food. So a number of systems have driven that. So as I said, there's, there's investments that have been made on our side in the conveyance uh, transitioning old canals into pipelines, making it more efficient because of the reduction and elimination of seepage, of evaporation, and uh, the fact that they're closed pipelines so that they're, the water is saved there for when the use will occur. On farm, we've seen investments in uh, low pressure pivots uh, by our farmers. We've even had an efficiency program where we've matched uh, provincial grant funding for uh, conversion of high pressure to low pressure pivots. Uh, basically, uh, you know, for 20 cents on the dollar, farmers are able to convert to more water efficient systems under these programs, and we see substantial water savings. And finally, you know, options around drip irrigation, which are, you know, more than 90% efficient in many cases. So, Here's an example of the uh, transition in terms of uh, investment in on-farm systems over time. So in 2001, we had about 19% low pressure pivots. These are the most efficient systems, as I was saying before, around about 85% uh, efficient. We more than tripled the number of, of low pressure pivot systems used in the WID between 2001 and 2017. And we've reduced the flood systems by over 80%, from 25% to 
and flood, as I said, is about 30% efficient. So you can see how, over time, we've managed to significantly increase the efficiency with which our irrigators irrigate on farm, and then we deliver through our conveyance system. So here's an example of that uh, pipeline construction, replacing an old canal with the, with the pipe there. So obviously we, uh, depending on the amount of uh, irrigation occurring in a particular area, that determines the capacity that we need. Uh, at a certain point, it's, it becomes, uh, when we're dealing with high flows, it's, it becomes more economical to uh, rehabilitate the canal. But uh, for the smaller flows, we can uh, typically accommodate those with pipe quite well. So uh, to conclude, we've got the WID uh, has, a, has a proud history. Uh, 75 years of, of serving the communities that uh, we provide service to, uh, delivering water to farms and really creating benefits for the communities we serve. You know, our, our current operations, uh, we've taken a number of steps and you can see how they've transitioned over time to be more efficient, growing more food with less water. And in the future, we're looking at opportunities that will mean we're delivering higher quality water more efficiently to potentially a greater number of acres as we save water and make more water available under our existing licenses as we're more efficient. So there's quite a bit of opportunity uh, in the district going forward and it is all for the benefit of our uh, irrigators and their communities we serve. So uh, glad to take any questions on any aspect of the presentation and uh, again appreciate your uh, invitation to come here and address you and you're coming out tonight. So thank you. Any questions? Okay. Well, if, uh, if there aren't any questions, I, I do appreciate your uh, coming out tonight. And uh, I uh, do have my contact information available on the uh, Irrigation District website. So if there are any questions that you think of after the presentation, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. What's the address again? Uh, it's www.wid.net. And so if there are any questions that you have, please let me know. Thanks so much.